Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. So, if you haven't seen last week's video, I explained that I was making some slightly different choices to the plants I'm going to put in my house and I also explained why. But, while I was looking for those plants on the internet, I had a really good old time, genuinely I had a fantastic time, just shuffling through all the UK plant shops just to see what's out there, see what's changed and everything else, see what's popping up for spring. So with that in mind, as I was going, I just sort of made a few notes and wrote a couple of things down. If I could pick anything for my house, would I pick any of these? Yes, probably. So please welcome my spring affordable houseplant picks for 2023. If you'd like to see a part two of this video, by the way, feel free to like and let me know in a comment below if that's something you'd like to see, because there's honestly way more than this list. I just thought I would condense it down a little bit, because at least this way, we have a top 10. It's not getting out of control. The first thing I saw when I was looking around and I was really sad because it's not something I can have in my house and it's literally, I've got it upstairs. It's something I wanted to put in my house. I'm pretty sure it was on the original shortlist. I'm just, I'm really upset about this. So it had to go on the list also because it's become quite affordable and that is the Alocasia Black Velvet. Now, is it the only Alocasia that's affordable now? No. Not at all. But there's something about this one that is just so cool. It's a lot easier to take care of than a lot of other alocasia. So say alocasia zebrina, alocasia caladora, what even other out? Uh, Coculata, things like that. Even African mask, I think. Sorry, Amazonica. Those plants are a little bit more difficult to take care of than this one. And this one looks very unique. So one, it's got dark foliage. Who does not want that? Yes, I know it is spring. Does it matter? No. No, it does not. We love a bit of dark foliage. We love a bit of contrast. I always talk about these plants. They're absolutely amazing. The pattern on the leaves reminds me a lot of tread on a tire. So it's really, really cool. But generally, they don't need as much water. They can handle much lower light. You need to give them a little bit more light than maybe what it recommends just to keep them nice and sort of compact, like stumpy. Otherwise, they can get a bit leggy. Even mine upstairs has. But generally speaking, if you would love an alocasia, but you don't have a ton of space and you're a bit sick of the other two dragons, so the green dragon, the silver dragon, this is the same vibe when it's even easier to look after. It's so, so cool. And it's so good to see it in garden centers now. I've always loved it. And I've got it down from, depending on the size, because that's what I'm going to do in these videos, I will try and give you like a small to large. But at least in the UK, where I am, I've got them anywhere from five to 25 pounds, which yes, 25 pounds is, it's getting up there a little bit. But the point is, if you really don't mind waiting, you can buy one of these for five pounds. And honestly, you need to do it because they will grow quick enough. You can get extras in with these because they pop as well. That's also an added benefit. So you might want to consider giving that one a go. So let's talk about this next plant. This next plant I paid, I think I paid about £450 for in 2020 for two leaves. I'm talking about a prayer plant that was very, very rare. And it was rare for a long time, I think. Very rare for a long time. But now you can get it in garden centers for, I put down 20 to 25 pounds, and that is the Maranta Silver Band. Now, not everyone's gonna care. I think this is for people that have always had their eye on it and have wanted to collect it, but the price was too much. Now is your time, now is your time. Or it's maybe for people that just like Maranta and want to try Maranta and they don't like the other colors out there. Personally, I do. It's kind of awesome to see them come this far and now be at the point where they are being produced in the Netherlands and just sort of sent out. I don't think they'll be in box stores for a little bit yet. We might be waiting six months, maybe a little bit more, but you can definitely find them in plant shops in the UK. You will definitely find them if you want them. I just don't think they're going to be as prolific, shall we say, as the others because we have the lemon lime Maranta that's only just starting to come out more now into box stores over here, such as like B&Q and stuff. So I think that the silver band will catch up, but it's just not quite there yet. So you could wait a little bit longer if you want to wait another year. That's absolutely fine. You can probably get the price down a little bit again. Eventually, I think both the lemon lime and the silver band will be about five pounds a plant. But at the moment, I've got them listed for 20 to 25. By the way, there is no difference in the care between any Maranta. In my personal opinion, anyway, I've never noticed a difference. So if you like one and you fancy that one and you think, oh, am I going to kill it? No, not if you're not killing your other ones. Next plant, I, I, right, I, I sort of have one in my house but I think it's got to come out of my house. And it's the first plant I've put in my house. So the next plant I want to talk about today is the Spathophyllum. I'm going to say variegated. There are a few different types of variegates, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to talk about the Spathophyllum 
diamond. Now that's not the one in my house. The one in my house is the Spathophyllum ghost and it's very cute and it looks a bit different. But the diamond, what do I have that down as? 20 pounds should get you a reasonable sized one, I think, I think from my looking the other day. Now that's really cool because again, variegated peace lilies, you used to kind of have to hunt to get them a little bit and then they came down a bit and then they sort of come out in waves a little bit. Sometimes you see some and then there's none for a few months and then there's another wave that comes out. So maybe that's just how they're produced. Maybe they're not so desirable that they're out everywhere. But then again, you've got the spathophyllum, the regular one, that just is everywhere. So I don't really know the reasons for that. But if you like peace lilies and you want a little something extra, perhaps you've had green ones a lot. Maybe you've got rid of it. Maybe you fancy getting another one. Maybe you drop it out for this one. It depends if you like variegates again. And there are different variations of variegated spathophyllum. But this is the one that's mainly hitting stores at the moment. So that's another pick for me. I really, really like them. I really, really like them. I'm very proud of mine, even though it's not a diamond because I fed it with my feed and I got it to flower straight away and it's like this big. So I'm really, really happy. The flower's like chunkier than the entire plant. It's great. It's literally great. I might have a photo of it somewhere, but I'm so proud of that plant. I hope I don't have to bring it back in. Right, the next plant is a plant, but in the US, you guys have had access to it for, I don't know, forever. We have not, okay? Netherlands got it a little bit and I think we're one of the last ones to get it here in the UK anyway. So for us, this is kind of cool and it's reached points now where it's very affordable. That is a gnat. How dare you? How dare you? Need to do another pest bomb. So I have the Epipremnum Cebu Blue and I have it ranging from £6 to £30. So obviously that depends on size. It depends if you care. You can buy a tiny little one, grow out a vine, trim the vine, propagate it in water, shove it back in, make it bushier, or you can just buy a bushier plant. So again, the reason it can be super affordable is because you can buy it small and just propagate it out. It depends on your space, it depends on your patience, it depends on your budget. But either way, let me tell you, this is a really, really easy plant. Not only is it pretty and blue and frosty, but the amount of times that I've absolutely pushed mine to breaking point upstairs and it's still fine. It's still fine. It's a really, really nice plant. And when you've got really big bushy one, they just, honestly, they just look epic. So if you want to dip your toe into Epipremnum and you don't like all the crazy variegated stuff out there, but you also don't want something just green, this is a really nice alternative. So absolutely, this is a spring pick. I think we should add a lot more blue into our collections because, oof, it's a very nice plant. Now I know. You're sick of hearing me talk about it. I talk about it in every video, every chance I get, every year, every classic plants of anything. Like, it's in there. I understand. We're all sick of it. However, it is classic for a reason. It's good for a reason. It's sexy. And I have to recommend it because, again, it's doing the rounds. And I think now you can get much more sizable plants than you could before. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Anthurium clarinervium. And it's still good, guys. I'm going to talk about it because it's still good. I'm not going to draw on about it because I do it all the time. But it is still a really, really good plant. They are not as easy as the other plants on this list. I'm not going to waste any time lying to you. They're not. They can get a little bit crispy around the edge. They can get something called bacterial rust, which is a little bit of a nightmare as well. But if you're good at keeping them and you have your pest control and your treatments on hand, they are absolutely fantastic. And in terms of neglect, they're absolutely amazing. In terms of like underwatering, I don't think you can kill these. I really don't think you can kill these. I don't think I've ever killed one. And I do neglect these quite a lot. You'll see what I mean if you've ever seen the roots of these plants. They're so thick and tuberous, they can really, really, really handle underwatering. It's when you get other plants like some Epipremnum when they're young, a lot of Philodendron, they have more hairline roots and they can't really tolerate being underwater because the roots will just wither away and just, they can't handle it basically. So this plant I have to put out there, it's really nice. It's a great introduction to a bougie Anthurium. There are others as well that are quite nice, but this one will always be a classic. I wanted to put this one on here for all you terrarium lovers, because if you haven't put one of these in your little terrarium, I, I, what, are you okay? Are you okay? Honestly, these are absolutely fantastic. I'm talking about a jewel orchid. I'm talking about the most bang for your buck that you could probably get. I'm talking about a plant that hasn't been the easiest, I would say, to get here in the UK over the years, but now it's definitely about, I've seen it plenty of places. I'm talking about the Macordes patola. I believe that's how you say it. I don't know if it has a slang name. I feel like it would. I don't know. It's basically if Voldemort struck an orchid. That's kind of what we're going with. It's very photogenic. It's not a case of being catfished when you see photographs of it. It genuinely does look that good, literally. 
really does. And it's a lovely addition to a terrarium because a jewel orchid, and there's, there's so many types, there's so many types, let this be your guide, but jewel orchids just look fantastic. They cover a lot of ground. They're very flat. They're very, obviously, foliage driven. It's not like any other orchids where, you know, the leaves are a little bit more boring and then you have flowers at the top and stuff like that. Yes, they can flower. I'm not saying they can't flower, guys. But generally, I think if you buy a jewel orchid, you're doing it for the foliage and you can get so many pretty colors. But I think if you want to dip your toe into jewel orchids to see if you like it, you need something with a little bit of pizzazz to really test you and I think that that would be the McCordes Batola and I think it's absolutely stunning. It's such a pretty plant. I love it so much. So I had to put it on this list because it is creeping out in garden centers now and in plant shops and I do think it's worth a try. You don't even have to have a terrarium by the way. Just have some reasonable humidity. Grow it in a cloche, in a jar or something like that and you should be absolutely fine. They're very, very pretty. Very, very ornamental little plants. I, I love them. I really love them. Oh my god, I didn't tell you how much either of those last two plants were. The Clarinervium I have down at about 20 pounds. That will get you at least like one cluster of anthurium that's maybe a foot tall, something like that. And the Macaudes Patola I have down at 15 pounds. Now I realize these aren't American prices, Europe prices, blah 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 blah. I am in the UK. So you do need to kind of extrapolate a little bit and sort of have a look around your area because hey, something here that might be easy for us might be really, really difficult for you. And if that's the case, leave a comment because I always love to keep track of like what's going on in different places and who can get what and who can't get what. Oh, right. This plant, this plant. I'm really sad that this is not growing in my house. It's one of my favorite philodendron of all time. Yes, I've mentioned it a lot recently, guys. Yes, I have. But that's because it's spring and they do the rounds. I might even, you know what, I've got some down on the floor next to me that I propagated. If you remember a while back, I propagated a tray of these on a repot with me. But I'm talking about Philodendron Florida Ghost. Honestly, honestly, if you like white variegation, for example, but you're on a budget and you can't afford it, but you want something really bougie, if you like fancy shapes, if you like red stems, if you like anything of the sort, you can get Florida Ghost at an insane range of size and price. I honestly think you will find the exact size that you're looking for. You might need to be a little bit patient with stock level sometimes, but honestly, you will find exactly what you're looking for. Because I have them down at anywhere between £15, maybe slightly cheaper, and £150. Now, do not get me wrong. I realize this is an affordable spring picks video. I'm not suggesting that the £150 option is an affordable option at all. My point is, if you love a ghost, you don't mind waiting, you can get one actually for quite a lot of range in there. It's probably one of the most versatile priced plants that there is at the moment, and it's certainly one of the prettiest. Not only that, but not every philodendron, guys, looks great when it's juvenile. A lot of them are just a bit Meh, like what is this? The Florida Ghost, however, looks fantastic. It looks fantastic when it's a baby. It looks fantastic when it's in its teenage years. And of course it looks fantastic mature. So there is so much range there, so much range. You can find cuttings as well, obviously, if you don't want to go to garden centers, as with all of these plants, but I'm mainly going off garden centers and garden center prices. I think it's good to know what's out there. Florida Ghost, if you're on the fence, mm, seriously, you will not regret this plant. So I've mentioned these next plants before on videos and I think it was in an affordable video as well and again each spring they're coming out will they be out in summer mm, maybe I they tend to just I don't know people stop talking about them after spring so I feel like they're I don't want to say they're a fad but they're like highly seasonal you feel me and I know that a lot of that is to do with the way they grow because they're rhizome based and everything like that I totally get that but I need you to understand if you want something big and dramatic and colorful and cheap as heck, probably the cheapest plant on this list, then you need a caladium. You need a caladium, you need a caladium. I've only ever had one and I would love to have one back. I don't believe I can yet, but I think the caladium I had was a white queen. Can't remember, it was white. It had tiny little green leaf margin and the, you know, the primary veins were pink and it was incredible and it was so easy to take care of. Literally, it simply got underwatered, but it got chronically underwatered, to be honest. And it sat in the shade, like, way too much. But, but... What do I have them at mature price? For an established caladium of a given color, I have them at around 15 pounds for a plant, right? Now, hmm, okay, how's it the cheapest on this list? There's other things for cheaper. 
Yes, however, you can buy Caladiums as bulbs if you want. And trust me, they are cheap. They're as cheap as you're going to get. And these plants will multiply quite quickly. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. You might even have a friend, to be honest, with a spare bulb or a spare pop from a Caladium or something like that. They're pretty ferocious. So if you want something that's like, ooh, what is that? Caladiums are fantastic plants for that, especially if you want to add a little bit of color, quite dramatic color as well. I don't like every single Caladium out there. Some of them I find a bit gay. Garish. Some of the really, really, really accessible ones I do find garish, but things like the the White Princess or the White Queen, White Queen, they are quite nice. And there are, there are a few other ones as well. There's like a Christmas one. I can't remember all the, all the types now, but there's some very, very pretty ones. So if you want something colourful, it's really affordable. Seriously, just, just literally, just start Googling Caladium. Just start Googling Caladium. I tell you what, you'll have a great time. Oh, this next plant. I can't put this in my house. I've had this before. I adore this plant. I did not look after it the best first time around. It was my first house plant that I would consider a little bit dramatic. Uh, I left it in front of an open window one day and it, it literally, within three hours, it was in summer by the way as well, which I don't really understand. Within three hours, it went from this to this. Literally, you could probably time lapse it. And I don't mean in the way that it should. I'm talking about the Calathea orbifolia. And when I say I don't mean in the way that it should, if you don't know prayer plants or Calathea, or however you want to call them, they tend to bow their leaves during the day and they come up at night like this. So in prayer. But this kind of wilting was, it was not good. I might even have a picture of it on a really old Instagram somewhere of what happened to it, but it never really recovered after that. It was okay. I think I had to actually tie it together. <laughs> at the two strongest points in the middle of the plant. But that said, I like this plant because it looks very, very jungly. It is affordable now. It always was affordable. This is the weird thing. It always was affordable, but you couldn't get it everywhere, right? I got mine from Ikea in 2017, was it, maybe? Just before I started YouTube in 2018. And I got mine from Ikea and I got it for £10. And it was huge, guys. It was maybe like a 21 centimeter pot. It was decent. But if you tried to get that plant from any other plant shop, it would be about a third of the size and about four times the price. And I don't know why, but Ikea just had it so right. So a lot of my really good Calathea I used to get from Ikea, which is funny because I don't know about anybody else, but Ikea used to be a solid score for houseplants. I don't think it is anymore. Like every time I've got in there, unless you want a palm or a dracaena or something fake, that's about it. That's about your lot. So let me know if you agree with that or you remember the days where Ikea would have absolutely mammoth Calathea in because I really miss that because I was looking for this plant yesterday and it is affordable now and it is out there. That's kind of the point I'm making. Is it Ikea affordable? No, but I got one yesterday for how much was it? I think it was a 21 centimeter pot and I think I got it for about 35 pounds. Have I written that on here? Or have I written something else? Let me just check. My lock screens come on. How rude. I've written 15 to 50 and that is why because as soon as you go large size, they do, they do back up the price. And I think that's just because people, I don't know if people are importing them as much or whatever have you, but don't be fooled into thinking that they're expensive because they aren't. You just need to know where to get them. And if you have an Ikea somewhere in the Manchester area that sells these things big, let me know because I will gladly pick one up or any other Calathea for that matter because, oh, but yeah, perfect choice in my opinion for people that like aroids but want to try a Calathea. I would personally pick that one. I think it looks not quite aroidy, but it, it would sit in nicely, I think, with a lot of crawling heart-shaped philodendron or monstera or something like that. Give it a go if you've ever been considering it. This next one, not enough people have this plant and I would love it if you guys could tell me why. The next plant on my list today is the crocodile fern. And I've had one, I killed it. I might have killed it. I think I spider mited it to high heaven. Uh, you can do that with a fern in high humidity, it turns out. You can, I did. I lived it. But it was an amazing plant. And as the name might suggest, it, it's skin. I nearly said it's skin. The surface of the leaf has a texture that basically looks like crocodile scales. And that's why we gave it the name. But I like this plant because there are a lot of ferns out there, but I, I just don't really see people getting this one. And I don't get why, guys, because honestly, it's very, very easy. It is. I, I realize I'm speaking as someone that killed mine, but I was a different person back then. And I had a lot going on. And I do want one of these for my house. But I just want you to know that these things are about, you can get them for less than £15. I think you can get them for £10. 
Yeah, I've written 10 plus. So 10 plus pounds in the UK. You can get huge sizes, but again, I think the price is going to rack up. So I don't think you need a big one of these. And in my personal experience, because I've had huge ones and I've had a tiny one, they kind of look a little bit better small, in my opinion. Not everyone might agree with me, but I kind of like them better small. I like them when they're diddy. Let me know what you think about that. If you've had a small one or a large one, or you've grown yours out or whatever. Do you, did you not think it was cute or small? I don't know. But anyway, they're very, very affordable and they're very different. They make a great gift for somebody into ferns that doesn't have it. It's a lovely one to add because just kind of like, oh, didn't expect that. Do you know what I mean? Really, really nice pick for spring. Absolutely love them. Can't wait to have one myself. So clearly I endorse it. <laughs> And that was my top 10 spring picks that are, I, I want to say they're affordable. Plant prices are plant prices. They're not necessarily supermarket affordable, but the plants that end up in supermarkets, we need to say a little prayer for anyway, because you, you probably shouldn't buy one unless it's a supermarket that's just brought them in, because they might probably die on you quite quickly. But those are my picks. Let me know if you agreed with any of my picks. Let me know if there is things that I should have put on here that I haven't, that you're thinking, why wouldn't you put that on? Oh my God, look at this, this is brilliant. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy. And if you are not already subscribed, I would love to have you as part of the family. Similarly, you can also join my channel. You can do this by clicking the join button near my name. It shows up on my channel and it should show up underneath this video. If you join that, there are different member options options, including early access to all of my videos. So every week, my Friday video will be available much earlier during the week for you to enjoy before anyone else gets to see it. So if that's something you're interested in, then please feel free to look at those options there. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will see you maybe really soon, maybe next Tuesday. I'm kind of about to sort out some Maranta and stuff like that for the house. So I'm probably just going to film sort of sorting those out to basically put in the car and take over there. So I might film that for you. It won't be anything high production. Anyway, that's it for this week's video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Have a great weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye.